الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يقبل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وَشَرُ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are those things when you be invent into this religion of ours وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ And everything when you be invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ عَنْ أَمِيرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَبِي حَفْسِ عُمْرِ بْنِ الْخَطَّابِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالْ سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إنما العمال بالنيات وإنما لكل امرئ ما نوى فمن كانت حجرته إلى الله ورسوله فحجرته إلى الله إلى الله ورسوله ومن كانت حجرته لدن لدنيا يصيبها أو لامرأة ينكحها فحجرته إلى ما هاجر إليه رواه بخاري ومسلم. This famous hadith that opens many of the books of knowledge, many of the collections of a hadith as a reminder about the importance of the niyyah, sincerity in one's intention. The leader of the believers, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he said that he heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam say, actions are judged by their intentions, they're judged by their motives, what drives you to do that action. So each man or woman will have what they intended. Thus, whoever made hijrah, whoever migrated for Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then their migration was for Allah and, their messenger, and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But whoever migrates for some worldly thing, for some gain in this life, whether it's wealth or whatever it may be, or to marry a, a, a woman, then his migration is for that which he migrated for. As Muslims, we constantly need to evaluate ourselves and the intent behind everything we do. Who is this for? Who am I seeking to please? Who do I want to be pleased by my actions or my speech? What do you seek to gain by what you're going to do or what you're going to say? The intention is very important. Because for deeds to be accepted by Allah, they must have ikhlas. The sincerity of the intention of the action. And they must be in accordance to the sunnah of His Messenger wasallam. So let us look in depth at this matter of the intention and its sincerity. And why it will be vital even yawm al-qiyamah. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن أول الناس يقضى يوم القيامة عليه رجل استشهد فأوتي به فعرفه نعمه فعرفها قال فما عملت فيها قال قتلتك قتلت فيك حتى استشهدت قال كذبت ولكنك قتلت لأن يقال جريء فقد قيل ثم أمر به فصحب على وجهه حتى أنقي في النار. أبو هريرة هنا رئيس. He heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say 
The first people against whom judgment will be pronounced on the day of judgment, Yom al Qiyamah, the day of resurrection, will be a man who died as a shaheed in the eyes of the people. He died as a martyr. So he will be brought before Allah, and Allah will make him know the blessings and the favors that He bestowed upon him. And the person will recognize those blessings and those favors. Allah the Almighty will say, what did, you do? what did you do with these blessings and favors? And He will say, I fought in your cause, for your sake, until I died as a shaheed. And Allah will tell him, Kadat, you're a liar. You only fought so people could say, Antajari, you're a courageous, brave person, strong-willed, a shaheed. So he will be commanded, ordered, he will be ordered that he will be dragged along his face until he is cast into the hellfire. So we should be mindful of this labeling of shaheed. Only Allah really deserves to label that title. Because he is the one who fully knows the intention of the action of the, of the person who did the thing. Then he said, وَرَجُلٌ تَعَلَّمَ الْعِلْمِ وَعَلَّمَهُ وَقَرَأَ الْقُرْآنِ فَأُوْتِيَ بِهِ فَعَرَّفَهُ نَعَمَهُ فَعَرَّفَهَا قَالَ فَمَا عَمِلْتَ فِيهَا قَالَ تَعَلَّمْتُ الْعِلْمِ وَعَلَّمْتُهُ وَقَرَأْتُ, وقرأت فِيكَ الْقُرْآنِ قَالَ كَذَبْتُ وَلَكِنَّكَ تَعَلَّمْتُ الْعِلْمِ يُقَالْ عَالِمْ وَقَرَأْتُ الْقُرْآنِ يُقَالْ هُوَ قَارِئْ فَقَدْ قِيلَ ثُمَّ أُمِرَ بِهِ فَصُحِبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ حَتَّى أُلْقِيَ فِي النَّارِ Then the Prophet ﷺ, he, command, he brought to account another person, Yom Al-Qiyamah, from the ones first judged. Another one will be a man who studied religious knowledge, and he taught it, and he used to recite the Qur'an. And this was his actions. He will be brought and Allah will make him know the favors that Allah blessed him with, the favors that Allah gave him. And the man will acknowledge, yes, you gave me the faculties to get this knowledge, to memorize the Qur'an, to read the Qur'an, etc. So he will say this and acknowledge it. And then Allah will ask, what did you do with what you had been given? He said, I learned the knowledge and I taught it. I read the Qur'an and I recited it for your sake. And it will be said to him, Kadat. You're a liar. You only did this so that people could say, and to Adam, you're a, you're a knowledgeable, learned person. You only read the Quran and recited it for the people so people could say, who are it? Right? So people could say, he is a, a person who recites the Quran. He's a reciter of the Quran. So it was said, then he will be ordered to be dragged along his face until he is cast into the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it's important. As we mentioned somewhat in the hadith last week, that we may see people in certain states, but this does not mean success on Qiyamah. What's in the heart, the intention, the sincerity, will matter first and foremost. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هُوَ أَعْنَمُ بِكُمْ إِذْ أَنْشَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ وَإِذَا أَنْتُمْ وَإِذْ أَنْتُمْ أَجِنَّةٌ فِي بَكُونِ أُمِّهَاتِكُمْ فَلَا تُزَكُوا أَنْفُسِكُمْ هُوَ أَعْنَمُ بِمَنْ اتَّقَى Allah says what means, <coughs> He knows, you well, when he created you from the earth, he created Adam السلام, from the earth. And when you were fetuses in your mother's, mother's wombs. So ascribe not purity to yourselves. Do not say you're a person of taqwa or call yourself from the muttaqeen or whatever it may be. He, Allah, knows best who fears Allah and keeps his duty to Allah. Then the Prophet وسلم, he mentioned a third man. وَرَجُلٌ وَسَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَطَاهُ مِنْ أَصْنَافِ الْمَالِ كُلِّهِ فَأُوْتِيَ بِهِ فَعَرَّفَهُ نِعَمَهُ فَعَرَفَهَا قَالَ فَمَا عَمِلْتَ فِيهَا قَالَ مَا تَرَبْتُ مِنْ سَبِيلٍ تُحِبُّ, تحب, تحب أَنْ يُنْفَقَ فِيهَا إِلَّا أَنْفَقْتُ فِيهَا لَكَ قَالَ كَذَبْتُ وَلَكِنَّكَ فَعَلْتَ لِيُقَالْ هُوَ جَوَّادْ فَقَدْ قِيلَ ثُمَّ أُمِرَ بِهِ فَصُحِبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ ثُمَّ أُلْقِيَ فِي النَّارِ رواه مسلم وكذلك في سنن الترمذي والنساء So this hadith concludes, and again it's in Sahih Muslim, and the sunnah of al-Tirmidhi and nasai where the Prophet Sallallahu then said from the other men to be called, from the first people to be called to account Yom Al-Qiyamah will be another man who Allah made rich, and He gave him all kinds of wealth. And he will be brought before Allah. And Allah will make him know all of the favors and blessings he bestowed upon him. And he gave him. And the man will acknowledge that he was bestowed with these favors and these blessings. And he will acknowledge it. So Allah will ask him, what did you do with these favors and blessings I gave you? He will say, I did not go anywhere on the earth except that I spent money for your sake. I kept spending in the sake of Allah. 
And it will be told to him, كذبت. You are a liar. You did so, so that people would say, Anta Jawad. You're an open-handed, generous person, or you're a person who gives. So it will be said to him, he will be ordered to be dragged along his face until he's cast into the hellfire. <clears throat> and this was the end of the hadith. Three men, one who died as a shaheed. And it doesn't mean three men, three groups of people, Yom Al-Qiyamah, who will be of the first question. Some of those who died as martyrs. Some of those who learned ilm or learned knowledge and the Qur'an. And some who had a lot of wealth and they spent it in the way of Allah. But they will all be told that they did not do this for the right reason, so they will be thrown into the hellfire. They did not do with those things a sincere action pleasing to Allah. Rather, they did it for some other worldly gains or to be praised by the people. And this is a common disease in our hearts. Giving to say they gave. Giving so that others praise you. Praise you. Even giving when you hate to give. You're so angry that you're giving this charity. Yet you, you still may do it. But inside of you, you're boiling. This only affects your soul. Whoever does some good, it's for the benefit of his or her own soul. Whoever does some evil, it will be against his or her own soul. Allah does not need us. And until we understand that we're in full need of Him, and He does not need us, that we benefit from the relationship with Allah being one upon Tawheed and the correct Aqeedah, and the Qur'an and the Sunnah of His Messenger وسلم, as understood and lived by the Salaf of this Ummah, the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the Tabi Tabi'een, then, only then, can we be on that path that will lead us to success as we're going to continue to see. With respect to this sadaqah, Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمُوا لَا قُبْرِقُلُوا صَدَقَاتِكُمْ بِالْمَنِّ وَالْأَدَى كَالَّذِي يُنْفِقُ مَا لَهُ رِيَاءَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says what means, O you who believe, do not render your charity, your sadaqah in vain. How would you give and then you render in vain? By reminding people of your generosity or by injury, like him who spends his wealth to be seen of men and he does not believe in Allah or the last day. His reason was not to please Allah so that Allah could bless him, forgive him, have mercy on him. It was so people could be pleased, call him Jawad, call him a generous person. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, look at some other hadith relating to all of this, realizing that the intention has to be sincere, has to be pure for the sake of Allah, for our deeds to be accepted. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه ومن قام ليلة القدر إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he relates in the hadith which is in Sahih al-Bukhari from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever fasts Ramadan إيمانا واحتسابا the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم didn't say من صام رمضان غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه just whoever fasts it his previous minor sins are forgiven. No. He said, Imanan wahtisaban. Imanan, out of firm belief, believing in Allah, believing that Allah is his creator, that he needs his mercy to make it to Jannah. Ihtisaban, hoping for that mercy and that forgiveness so he may make it to Jannah. The one who fasts from Allah, Imanan wahtisaban, then this person's previous minor sins will be forgiven. Whoever is seeking Laylat al Qadr, Imanan wahtisaban, out of firm faith. And hoping for the reward from Allah with that pure intention, then this person, if they seek Laylat al Qadr, their previous minus sins will be forgiven. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah's Messenger he said, Man ma qala abdun la ilaha illallah qat mukhlisan illa fudihat lahu abwab al sama hatta tufdiya ila al arshi ma ma shtanab al kaba'il. This hadith, which is Hassan in the Sunnah of the Tirmidhi. Abu Huraira, he narrates that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, No worshipper has ever said, La ilaha illallah. And this is not translated, there is no God but God. This is translated that there is no one, no thing, no object worthy of worship except for Allah, alone without any partners. This is the way you translate the kalimah. Alright, it's not just there's no God but God. Because obviously the people take gods in wealth, in other righteous people, in, in other people they may love, etc. No worshiper has ever said, La ilaha illallah, sincerely, mukhlisan, meaning they're going to follow it up with action. First and foremost, the salah, except that the gates of Jannah will be open for it until it reaches to the throne, so, as long, so long as he avoids the, kabah, the major sins. So as long as he stays away from those major sins. 
Zayd ibn Thabit, he narrates that Ali ibn, Muhammad, uh, Ali ibn Muhammad, he added to this narration the following statement from the Prophet Wasallam. The Prophet وسلم, he said in this authentic hadith, which is Hassan, the Prophet وسلم, he said, there are three things because of which hatred will not enter the heart of a Muslim. You must have these things so that you don't have hate in your heart. The first one, sincerity in doing the action only for Allah. If you're not doing things solely for Allah, then you will, you will have hatred in your heart. It must be for Allah. Why? So that when the people let you down, when you don't get what you were seeking, when nobody acknowledges your hard work or your sacrifice or whatever, you know that Allah knows it. You did it for Him. So guess what? You're always happy. You've given sadaqah. You know Allah loves it. You know Allah loves it. You know Allah loves that action. You did it sincerely for His face, for His face, for Him to be pleased with you. So this sincerity in that action, because of it, hatred will enter your heart. The second one he mentioned, being sincere towards the rulers of the Muslims. And this is a topic in and of itself. Because many people will actually exit the aqidah of our righteous predecessors. Because of wanting to curse and slander and throw takfir, throw disbelief upon the Muslim rulers, or the rulers of the Muslim lands. And regardless of what you want to feel, or what your brain is analyzing, or what news you're watching, or any politics that you love to discuss, this is dangerous territory that the Sahaba never treaded upon. Because in Islam, even if the ruler was to beat you and steal your wealth, كَمَا قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, Even if he was an Abyssinian slave who beat you and stole your wealth, you're still to obey him. And you're supposed to make dua for him. But when that exits, and you have enmity towards him, and you start to curse him or revile him, or pray to Allah to harm him, then how's their hatred ever going to be released from your heart? And the last one, Adhering to the jama'ah, to the body, the main body of the Muslims. Adhering to that jama'ah. The jama'ah is not, oh well there's 90% Sunnis, uh, this is the jama'ah. No. The Prophet says, The Prophet said, this ummah, the Jews, will divide into 71 sects or group. The Christians 72, the Muslims 73. He said, كُلُّهُمْ تِنَّارِ إِلَّا وَاحِدًا All of them will be in the hellfire. From the Muslim, the, the Muslim body, the 73 different sects, all of them in the fire, إِلَّا وَاحِدًا Except for one. فَقَلُوا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ مَنْ هُمْ Or Messenger of Allah says, Who are they? Because we want to be here. He said, الْجَمَاعَةَ الْجَمَاعَةَ In another narration, he clarified الْجَمَاعَةَ مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ الْيَوْمُ أَصْحَابِي He clarified the jama'ah. It can be one person. It can be two people. It can be three people. It's not a number that gives you that title. It's the one, ma ana alayhi yom, what I am upon today, my sunnah, wa ashabi, and the sunnah of the companions, of the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, the ones who lived with him, met him, saw him, believed in him before they died, and they died upon that belief. This is the Sahaba. Radiallahu anhum wa So this is how the person gets hatred out of the heart. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to do waqarabu. وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ لَنْ يُدْخِلْ أَحَدَكُمْ عَمَلُهُ الْجَنَّةِ وَأَنَّ أَحَبَّ الْأَعْمَالِ وَأَنَّ أَحَبَّ الْأَعْمَالِ أَدْوَمَهَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَإِنْ قَلْ رواه بخاري عائشة رضي الله عنها The mother of the believers رضي الله عنها May Allah be pleased with her The one who took slander Until this day You have some who accuse her of vile and filthy things This pure woman Who was the wife of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Alright? Aisha radiallahu anha. She narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, Do good deeds. Do them properly. Do them the right way. What's the proper way? Not the way you think it is. You can't go pray by your bed and say, Oh, the best way to pray is like this. And it counts as salah. How do we do our deeds properly? We follow the Quran and the Sunnah. The Sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, He's the best of mankind. Al-Uswatul Hasana, the best example Allah gave to us to follow to make it to Jannah. <coughs> he said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, do good deeds properly according to my Sunnah. Do them sincerely, but ikhlas. Let your heart do it only for the sake of Allah loving you and pleasing you. 
and do them moderately. You don't always got to go all out for it to count. You don't always got to do, yeah, if you can't do all 12 of the sunnah prayers or the rawatib, start with the two of fajr. Because they're qaidun min al-dunya wa ma fiha, the two rak'ahs before fajr, the two sunnah rak'ahs before the fard of fajr. They're better than this world and everything that's in it. You don't always got to do everything to its maximum. Do the best, do it moderately. Because your deeds are not going to make you enter Jannah. Come with all these good deeds and no sin. There is no guarantee of Jannah. Allah's rahmah, His mercy is needed for your deeds to be accepted for you to get to Jannah. Your deeds will not get you to paradise. And that the most beloved deed to Allah is not the grand one. It's the most regular one and the constant one. The one you do consistently. Even if it's little. Even if it's not a big thing. So never belittle, you know, that quick phone call to ask how somebody's doing. The taking two lemons to your neighbor, rolling in their trash cans, removing something harmful from the road of the people as long as it's safe for you. Don't belittle any good deed. Because with Allah, it can be granted. <تصفيق> إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam look at some other ahadith that guide the importance of the niyyah and show you the reward when it's purely for Allah so much so that even when you don't do something you may still get rewarded for it because you have the intention or you used to do it when you were capable. An Ibrahim Abu Ismail al-Saksaki, he said, I heard Abu Burda who, who accompanied Yazid ibn Khabsha on a journey and Yazid used to observe fasting when he was traveling. Abu Burda, he said to him, I heard Abu Musa several times saying that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, إِذَا مَرَدَ الْعَبْدِ أَوْ سَافَرْ كُتِبَ لَهُ مِثْلَ مَا كَانَ يَعْمَلْ مُقِيمًا صَحِيحًا رواه بخالي. Look at this hadith. It should be an encouragement that when you're home and you're comfortable, you're not traveling and you're not ill, come to the masjid. Why? Look at this hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, when a slave falls ill or he travels, he will get the reward similar that he gets for good deeds practice when he's at home and when he's in good health. So say your whole life you come to the masjid to pray your prayers. And then you get to the point where you're bedridden and you can't make it to the masjid. You have to pray at your home. Allah will still write for you the reward of praying in jama'ah in the masjid. This is the, the rahmah Allah built into this deen. This is the guidance of the Messenger وسلم, by Allah's command. When a slave falls ill, when he's traveling, even when you're traveling, you used to go to the masjid. And now you're traveling, you're not at the masjid. You're going here, you're doing even if it's for business or leisure. But you're used to coming to the masjid or used to fasting that specific day and you're not doing it because you're traveling or ill, you'll still get the reward if you're not doing it because you're traveling or you're ill. Abu Huraira, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, مَنْ هَمَّ بِحَسَنَةٍ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلَهَا كُتِبَتْ لَهُ حَسَنَةٍ وَمَنْ هَمَّ بِحَسَنَةٍ فَعَمَلَهَا كُتِبَتْ لَهَا عَشْرًا إِلَى سَبِعْمِئَةٍ دِعْثًا وَمَنْ هَمَّ بِسَيِّئَةٍ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلَهَا لَمْ تُكْتَبْ وَإِنْ عَمَلَهَا كُتِبَتْ رواه مسلم Another hadith that gives us so much, so much encouragement and inspiration to continue to do good. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, He who intends to do good but does not do good, Allah is going to still write it down as a hasana. So if you intend to do good but something stops you, Allah still writes it as a hasana. If you intend to do good and you do the good deed, Allah will multiply it by 10 to 700 times. If you intend to do evil, but you don't do it, something holds you back and you refrain from it, it will not be written down for you if you did not commit it. But if you did it, then it will be written for you. The intention, the sincerity of your intention, it matters. Allah knows what you're going through. Allah knows your intention and your sincerity. Allah knows if you love to worship, worship Him truly or not. Allah knows what's in your heart. Never is a good deed wasted. So much so that even if you intend it and you don't complete it, you'll still get the reward for it. As long as that niyyah was pure, and it would have been done according to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ إِنَّ لَا نُذِيعُ أَجْرَ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ عَمَلًا 
Allah says in Surah Al-Kahf, what means? Indeed, those who believe and do righteous deeds, indeed, we will not allow the loss, the loss of the reward of anyone who did well in their deeds. Allah won't lose, you won't lose any reward for the good you do. From that is the intention of the good that you want to do, that you may not get to do it. The Prophet ﷺ in another hadith, he mentioned of the people of the world, he said that the world is four types of people. This will be another khutbah. But for today, one of those groups was وَعَبْدٌ رَزَقَهُ اللَّهُ عِلْمًا وَلَمْ يَرْزَقَهُ مَالًا فَهُوَ صَادِقَ النِّيَّةِ يَقُولْ لَوْ أَنَّ لِي مَالًا لَعَمَلْتُ بِعَمَلْ فُنَانٍ فَهُوَ بِنِيَّتِهِ فَأَجْرَهُمَا سَوَاءٍ The Prophet ﷺ, he said of the types of people in the world, is a person who upon has Allah, Allah has, upon, Allah has conferred knowledge upon him, but not wealth. But he's sincere in his niyyah. And he says, if I had the wealth, I would give money like so and so and so and so. And so, if that is his intention, his reward will be the same as that other person. It's not just the action. The niyyah, the base of the heart. What's happening in that heart? إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَتْ جَسَدُ كُلُّهُ إِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَتْ جَسَدُ كُلُّهُ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ That piece of flesh, that morsel of flesh in the فِلْجَسَدِ مُضْغَى That morsel of flesh that's in the body, if it's sound, the rest of the body will be sound. If it's corrupt, the rest of that body will be corrupt. Indeed, that morsel of flesh is the heart. The home of that sincerity and that intention being pure, having ikhlas, this is what will give you half of that battle to getting your deeds accepted. The other half, according, it has to be done according to the sunnah of the Prophet Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, he narrated from Muawiyah that Muawiyah went to a circle in the masjid and there was people there remembering Allah. They weren't doing dhikr and tasbih together because this is not allowed or sanctioned in Islam. If you're going to do dhikr, tasbih, this dua, you should do it individually. All right? But he found them remembering Allah, sitting around and studying the Qur'an together, being praising Allah for letting them, leading them to Islam. So Muawiyah, he went and saw them, and he said something that the Prophet ﷺ said in the following hadith we're going to mention. He said, regardless of it, to make it short, that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he saw him go to a circle of people who were studying the deen of Allah, and remembering Allah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam خرج على حلقة من أصحابه فقال ما أجلسكم قالوا جلسنا نذكر الله ونحمده على ما هدانا للإسلام ومن به علينا قال آه الله ما أجلسكم إلا ذات آه الله ما أجلسكم إلا ذات آه الله ما أجلسكم إلا ذات قالوا والله ما أجلسنا إلا ذات قال أما إني لم أستحلفكم تهمة لكم ولكنه آتان جبريل فأخبرني أن الله عز وجل يباهي بكم الملائكة رواه مسلم The Prophet ﷺ, he came upon a group of people who were studying the religion of Allah studying the Quran together remembering Allah, praising Allah for leading them to Islam so he went out to them, to his companions and said what makes you sit here? they said we're sitting here in order to remember Allah to praise Him, for He guided us to the path of Islam and He conferred favors and blessings upon us. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, is this what you're sitting here for? Is this really what you're sitting here for? Really, is this, a, come on, no one's coming to do business with you, you're not needing someone to just chop it up and have a, you know, catch up on old times, no. Is this what you're sitting here for? They said, Wallahi, this is what we're sitting here for, by Allah, this is what we came to do. Learn the religion of Allah, study the religion of Allah, praise Allah, glorify Allah, make a istighfar to Allah, praise Allah for guiding us to this deen. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, I'm not asking you to take an oath because of any allegation against you. I'm not asking you to swear because I'm accusing you of something. I was only asking you because it was a Jibreel came to me and he informed me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking to the angels about your magnificence. This was their intention. It was pure. They didn't go to this place, to this masjid, to this masjid, to meet up, other than for the sake of Allah, to praise Him and glorify Him. This was their niyyah. It was purely for the face of Allah. 
So what was the reward that Allah, above the seven heavens, above His arsh, separate from His creation, was praising them to the malaika, to the angels. You angels got no free will. You got to do as I say. These people have free will. They could be running following their desires. They could be chasing money. They could be chasing women. They could be chasing whatever they want to chase. But they're sacrificing to come and praise me and glorify me and remember me. So what? Allah, He boasts about you to the angels. And yet the masajid are empty. The halaqat, remembering Allah, learning the deen of Allah. Very few people attend. But look at for the ones who intend purely. Allah boasts about you to the angels because your niyyah was pure. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْا يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُوا أَمْثَالَكُمْ Allah says what means, and if you turn away from Islam and the obedience of Allah, Allah will exchange you from some, for some other people and they will not be your lights. Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan, Allah, may Allah preserve him. He said, if you turn away from performing good deeds, with knowledge and being sincere to Allah, then Allah will replace you with other people who will be obedient to Allah, upright upon that obedience to Allah, and Allah will not let His religion disappear. He will prepare it for those who will adhere to it. He will prepare it for those who want to establish the deen. So be of those people. So it is upon the Muslim to make dua to Allah and to make him upright upon this religion and to be sincere for his, to his Lord. This is why the Prophet ﷺ, when he was asked to, for some advice, give me something that I'm not going to ask nobody after, it, after you. قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقِمْ Say, I believe in Allah and have istiqamah. Stand firm upon that belief, that tawheed, that oneness of Allah in worship and lordship and His names and His attributes. ثُمَّ اسْتَقِمْ Have istiqamah put into action. Because faith is not just a, 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 a statement of the tongue or a belief in the heart. It has to have the actions of the limbs. May Allah make us of those who are sincere in their actions, who make their intentions purely to please Him, only to please Him, so that they may earn His mercy and forgiveness and be admitted into the highest of Jannah. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والأحياء منهم والأموات إنك أن تسميع قريب المجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على أعدائك وأعداء الدين يا رحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين